Didn't leave none for me, then. Wasn't none in it to start with. There was a good swig earlier. No. I know there was. I tell you there wasn't. I can't go all night without a drink. Get some sleep. Take your mind off it. It's not right. What is it? You could have left me a taste. How often do I have to keep telling you? There wasn't none in it to start with. Fine bloody mate you are. We'll see if we can turn up at the mission tomorrow. You get no booze down here. No. But they'll give us something to eat. We've got to get out of London. Huh? It's no good for us here anymore. Uh, is there any place? You know something? Oh? I've never been out of the city. Not since I first came here as a kid. So you keep telling me. Maybe we ought to go on a road. Well, I've done all that, Arthur. It wouldn't last too many. Why not? The country coppers ain't no different from what they are here. <laughs> I'd have us inside before you could blink an eye. I couldn't do any more porridge. It'd kill me off for certain. It'd be better than here. In the country, I mean. Anywhere be better than here. <laughs> Perishing cold in the winter. <laughs> Perishing cold. <laughs> Come on. What do you think now? Get off the bed. Huh? It's my turn to kip now. What you had this morning? That wasn't a kip. I was just resting. You were snoring like an old sow. Come get on, Daniel. Oh, get to. Oh. You rotten. You bastard. know about my leg. You know I've got to keep it rested. What about my chest? That's not the same. If I don't take care of this leg, it'll go bad on me. And I won't be able to walk. Who's gonna hold your tiny little hand then, eh, Arthur? Nothing wrong with your leg. Use the armchair. Stretch out on that. Please, it's me double. I get cramps. Awful cramps. Half us better not in there. That's the drink, not the chair. <sighs> You're going to stay there, aren't you? You can have the bed tomorrow. I shall be here tomorrow. Oh, go into the Ritz, are you? I know where I can get a decent night's sleep. I got another dust place. Oh, I used it before. Here, yeah, listen, Arthur. Don't you go there again. You nearly copped it last time you went there. It's better than staying here with you. I'll get some peace and quiet down now. You didn't last time. Arthur, wait. You can go and rot. That's what you can do, mate. All right. You win me. You can have the lousy bed. Do you hear me? Come on back in. Arthur! Arthur! Oh. You had the bed this morning, you know you did. Oh. I didn't have to go off like that. Always getting into up. Just like an overgrown kid. You ought to be taught a lesson, man. Always moaning. Always snivelling. I'd do a sight better without you.
วายWhat time did you find him, Mr. Bronson? Near enough an hour ago, sir, about uh, 3 a.m. What were you doing here at 3 in the morning? Well, I always do around sometime during the night, sir, part of my job. You didn't hear anything earlier? Well, I don't know. What does that mean? Well, this place is pretty soundproof. You can't even hear the cars coming but in. But you did hear something. Well, I may have done. I had my television on last night, and about half past ten, I did hear a sort of a bang. I thought it was something out in the street, a car backfiring, or someone banging a dustbin lid. It wasn't loud, uh, more sort of muffled, you know. How I didn't long really have take you too been much been caretaker here? Ever since the flats was built, sir. Nearly four years now. Your own flats on the ground floor? Uh, yes, leads off the entrance hall. So if this sound didn't disturb you, it wouldn't disturb anybody else? Oh, no, I shouldn't think so. Excuse me, Governor, but did Mr. Bronson tell you the deceased was known to him? No, not yet. Oh, well, not known to me, exactly, sir. We had a report about a month ago. Oh? Oh, yes, I discovered the man on the premises down here. Doing what? Uh, sleeping in the back of one of the cars. Just dossing down. I don't think it was the first time, either. What did you do? Well, I grabbed him, of course. He scarfed, slipped off, stank a drink. Well, I just telephoned my report into the police station. Uh, I didn't want to have your yes, number. All just right, more thank sort of you, Mr. Bronson. We'll probably want to talk to you later on. You, uh, you know where to find me, sir, so, Tommy. So, he was known to you? Well, known to the beat constables anyway. His name's Arthur Glynn. He's a layabout with no means of support. He's been done for vagrancy several times. Also, petty larceny. Nothing serious. He's a wino. Sleeps rough, drinks even rougher. At least he did sleep rough. And we've got a report here that says he teamed up with a fellow called Danny Pierce some months ago. They've been squatting in a derelict house in the Waddington Road. It's a property due for demolition. And they've never been shifted? No, we, we never got around to turning them out. I mean, they weren't really causing any trouble. Weren't they? One of them's making up for it now, isn't he? Yes, it would seem so. If they got themselves a billet, what was he doing down here? Well, maybe they split up. When these people get on the booze, they're pretty unpredictable. Yes, but to come down here, where it almost been caught once before. It's warm, it's dark, and usually quiet. Oh, what about it, Doctor? You're all the same. You lot. Instant results all the time. Four oh. o'clock in the morning, too. We've all been dragged out of bed. Oh, well. It's a nasty one. A shotgun wound full in the chest. Couldn't live more than a few seconds. When? As far as I can say, about seven or eight hours ago. Uh, it's about half past ten. Mm, roughly. I'll be more precise after the post-mortem. What else do you want to know? It's male, white... Actually, dark grey. God knows when I had a wash last. Could be aged about 50. General condition poor, general smell grim. Shot fired from close range, do you think, Mr. Yes, I'd say about 10 feet, not much further. But there is an unusually widespread of shot. Yes, I agree. The injury is pretty widespread, too. Sawn off shotgun? Almost certainly. Terraway's weapon. Now, uh, caliber? If we find a cartridge case, I'll let you know. Well, there is just one other thing. Yeah? 
Well, offhand, I'd say the position of that body's all wrong. What do you mean? Took the full force of that shot in the chest, right? Must have been like a sledgehammer. The impact would have slammed him straight up against that wall. And he's nowhere near the wall. And he's lying face downwards. Well, you'll have to excuse me now. Thank you, Doctor. Of the house of house gang? Yes. I want a list of all the residents in this block. Oh, mostly professional people. The rents are sky high. Lucky for some. Got the murder room organized? I would want to kill him. Why would anybody want to kill a wino like that? With a gangland weapon, too. Well, maybe he was more than just a wino. Maybe that was just a front. Oh, you heard what the doctor said? Take years for him to get into that state. Wouldn't that be taking a front just a little bit too far? Mm. Got a point. Thank you. Now, there's something wrong somewhere. We've got some space for you at the station, Governor. Right. Maybe he'd been somewhere. Seen something, done something. Now, Arthur Glynn's not the only thing that smells around here. The whole thing's got a taint of bad fish about it. Mr. Kingdom's looking for a herring. Look, I want to speak to this, uh... Danny, what's his name? Yes. Yeah. Now. Well, oh, before we go to the station? Before we do anything. Better let some fresh air in. All right. Is him? Yeah. All right, let's see what he has to say for himself. The window's stuck. You'll have to suffer. Yes. Yes. He's been on the mess. I have to do more than shake him. Danny boy, come on. Up. Hey. No. All right, all right. Just go in. Not done nothing. Lost me way. Honest mistake. Oh, give me a breather. It'll be all right here. I don't know how I got here. How's your head, Danny? Oh, yeah, not my head. Uh, it's my leg. Oh, I'm a little old. Come on, Danny. Do you feel like answering some questions? Oh, he's no good in that state. Get him down to the station. Sober him up. Oh, come it's important. On. I wouldn't bank on it. What do you mean? He's got a reputation for being the biggest liar in London. Drunk or sober. It's like a disease with him. Well, we'll see about that, shall we? Where do you think you're going? Hey. Stay here. Turn this place over from top to bottom. See if you can find anything. Like what? Ooh. Anything. It's a great life, isn't it? Come on. Ooh. For you, Danny. What should it this time? Coffee. Ah, oh, not again. Oh, get on with it, Danny. Come on. Drink it. Come on. Not addictive. All of it. Lord, you, you have no right to do it. Bloody torture. All right, let's try it once more. I tried what? I don't know what you want. The truth. Just oh. the truth. That's all. You were sharing that room with Arthur Glynn. Oh, I was, and I wasn't. You shared the place and you quarrelled last night. Uh, no difference of opinion. He walked out. He went for a breath of air. What time? How the hell should I know? Look, you haven't told me what all this is about Look, yet. Look, Danny. I mean, I've just done, done nothing wrong, you know. You drag me in here, you push me around. No one's push you around. You, you, you shove gallons of filthy tasting duff it down his throat. Coffee. And then you go on and on about Arthur Glynn. Because he's and, uh, dead. Is that you, sir? Your friend, Arthur Glynn, has been found dead. He was shot. Sure. We've got to know what time he left you and whether you know where he was going. <coughs> Do you? Yes. I don't believe you. Shot dead. Who want to shoot poor old Arthur? That's what we're going to find out. I mean, what for? He didn't mean anything to anybody. Not even to you? Oh. We sometimes share the place to keep. You've been together for some time. Oh, half an hour. And you quarrelled last night. I keep telling you, there's a mere difference of opinion. He walked out. Where was he going? Look, I told him to stay away from the place. What place? Basement car park. Yes. 
He was surfed out of there once before. He got into trouble last time. You people were going to have him for trespass. What did you do after he'd gone? Me? Oh, nothing. I wasn't going to follow him out into the cold. No. I just kicked down and forgot all about him. And you didn't follow him out? No. You sure? Yes. If you think you're going to shove any more of that filthy tea... Here, I want to make a complaint against this man. An official complaint. He's nothing but a bloody torturer. Ever been in trouble with the law? No, of course not. I'm not in trouble now. You might be. I've never done nothing against the law. Oh, stop lying. Not helping us. You're certainly not helping yourself. You've been done by the law on several occasions. Want me to list them all? Misunderstandings and persecution. A lot of persecution. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. October 59. You were working in Somerset as an assistant gamekeeper. Oh, well, Don, oh, Don. He's not going to go over all that old stuff again, is he? At that time, you were charged with malicious wounding. Your victim was the head gamekeeper. You'd had a quarrel about your drinking habits. He was a right bastard, that one. And you ended up in court. And I was completely cleared. Insufficient evidence. It was accident. He was still wounded by a discharge from your shotgun. He was pushing me about in our trips. The gun just happened to go off. Arthur Glynn was blasted by a shotgun. Who? Huh? And you know all about shotguns, Danny. Just a minute. Last night, about 10.30, you were seen near the Green Man Public House in Alma Street. Witness states you were carrying a brown paper parcel, about three feet long, not very bulky. Oh, I, I, I made a mistake. It wasn't me. I was asleep. Three feet long. That's about the size of a sawn-off shotgun. I've never been anywhere near this uh, Watch it, Alma Street. Never in my whole life to help me. Sergeant, where is the Green Man? About halfway between his room in Waddington Road and the basement car park. Where Arthur Glynn's body was found. So no more lies. Let's get it straight. Oh, I've never been anywhere near Alma Street. I don't know the Green Man, Bob. And I was asleep in my room when poor Arthur was shot. That's it as straight as can be. Oh, for God's sake, can I have a drink? Lying down in a cell. We brought the doctor back to have a look at him. I don't like it. Well, when the Danny Pierces of this world go on the juice, they're capable of anything. Even blasting a hole in a man they've just had a petty quarrel with? Yes, even that. Where'd he get the gun from? Found it, still it. Sawn off shotgun. Weapon used by robbery teams, protection mobs, top criminals. Okay, but he doesn't know about guns. Why not just blast Arthur in the room? Look, don't look for logical behaviour from a meth drinker. And he is the only suspect you've got. Yeah, a pretty lousy one at that. Oh, what have you got there? Well, the house of house questionnaires are still coming in, but there's nothing of anything significant. Oh, there's a... There was a road accident last night. Two cars in collision just up the road, 10.47. Traffic department will give you all the details. We've just got this note. Have it checked. Right. What else? A list of tenants at the flats. Yeah. Uh, doctor, two dentists... Lawyer, four company directors, one a JP, consultant engineer, and their respective families. All respectable, no records. Pretty rich mixture. There's one more. A girl, living on her own, Denise Wright, flat seven. My guess is that she's some gent bit on the side. Anything now? No, we're still checking. Mm. Let's save time. That uh, caretaker, what's his name? Yeah, uh, Bronson. Yeah, he looked a bit of a snooper. Oh, all the time. Now send a car for him. Yeah, I've got him waiting outside. Bronson, would you care to come in, please? Ah, Mr. Bronson. I've already given a full and comprehensive statement to your officers. I really don't see the necessity for this interview, sir. Besides, I do have my own duties to attend to, you know. That block of flats doesn't run itself. Oh, of course not. A very responsible job. That's right. And you run a tall ship, Mr. Bronson. Eh? Yeah, you're not an ex-Navy man, then. Army. The Queen's own. Oh, Sergeant Major. Colour Sergeant. I should have known. Colour sergeants are pretty good on administrative work, aren't they? Mm, sit down, please. 
I keep my eye on things. Especially the residents, eh? I beg your pardon? I spotted you as a pretty intelligent sort of a bloke. You know, the sort of bloke who keeps his wits about him, notices things. You know what I mean? He sees things, Mr. Bronson? Well, was I wrong? There are some things that uh, do exactly. go on. Exactly. Uh, but uh, I am in a position you trust, you understand? Oh, yes, a perfect trust. Nevertheless, some people's private lives are a revelation, I must admit. Uh, take one of our residents, for example. Uh, and he's a justice of the peace, too. He has this girl that comes calling. That would be Mr. Portland in flat four. Oh, no, I didn't mention any names, no, did I? Oh, no. no. Did she call on Mr. Portland last night, by any chance? No. Mind you, it's about the first night she hasn't been there. Him with his wife in a nursing home in Radlett. Nice woman, too. Done a lot of good work for charity. Women's Institute, Oxfam, so on. Oh, very commendable. Related to the uh, Bartholomews, you know. The uh, Bartholomew family. Very nice, well-bred lady she is. Mm, such a damn shame. You do keep your eye on things, don't you? Finger on the pulse, sir. I consider it part of my job. Uh, tell me, have you been keeping your finger on the pulse of the young lady in flat seven? <laughs> what does that mean? There are some people that simply do not fit in, if you follow me, sir. Oh, absolutely. Not the right type. Yeah? You do realise, of course, that she's not quite a lady. Yes, we wondered about that. Mm. And I use the word lady very guardedly. Yeah. Not the right type at all. Oh, what type is she? Well, you know. Oh, yes, well, I expect we do. If you want my honest opinion, sir, I would say that she was not 100% respectable. I think she's being kept. Indeed. And I'll tell you another thing. I don't think that's her real name, either. What makes you think that? Well, twice in the past, there have been letters delivered to her, both addressed to a Miss Denise Warner, flat seven. Oh, of course. I suppose she could be an actress, but I've never seen her on the telly. Someone. Yes, he's here. All right, I'll tell him. The lab boys at the car park, something you ought to see before they pack up. Right. You better come with us, Mr. Bronson. You can see the shot pattern much more clearly now we've marked it. Now, this area is completely clear. Mm. Stand where the body was found. Excuse me. I see what you mean. There was something there, all right. Mm, something masking the shot. Must have been a car there, which was driven away after Glynn was shot, before we were called in. If that's the case, the vehicle must be peppered with shot. Mr. Bronson. Yes? Who usually parks their car there? Uh, no one, sir. That space is usually left empty. Now, some people visiting the residence do use it, but they're not supposed to park down here. We have reason to believe there was a car parked there last night. Well, I'm really very sorry. I couldn't tell you. I came down here at about half past seven to check the boiler. There was certainly no car left here then. That accounts for the position of Glynn's body. The impact would have thrown him back against the car. And he fell forward. Right. Yeah, I knew there was something wrong. Do you gentlemen mind telling me how much longer you're going to be down here? With all these lights burning and the tenants will be wanting to get Is that about the lights? Be... There are all these lights left on. You mean you don't keep these main lights burning all the time? Good no, 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 it cost a fortune. No, I put them on for a couple of hours in the morning. And I come down about half past four and turn them off again about uh, six. That's mostly when the tenants are coming and going. The rest of the time, the place is in darkness. Well, there's a pilot light left on. If they come home late, they use the headlamps of their cars. Why? This thing unlocked. Uh, yes, that's uh, Mr. Portland's car. Right, let's have it over there, will you? Oh, I see. Oh, we're not going to hurt it. Just push it over. I don't think you've got any right interfering with other people's property, especially with that of a JP. Uh, you might ask your residents to pay some attention to police advertisements about locking cars at all times. Right. Let's have the lights off. Look here, sir. Do it, please. Mind standing there by the door, please. Right. Now. What? Well, could you recognize him? Wouldn't be able to see who it was in this light. Right, let's have them on. So, Arthur Glynn came down here looking for a car to kip down in. He chose the one that was parked there. Just as he's getting in. The killer comes in, probably through that door there, sees what he thinks is his target... ...and blasts away. Well, that could explain that, it, but... ...that does it... explain it. Poor Arthur. Excuse me, Governor. Yeah? 
We just found the parcel that Danny Pierce was carrying last night. Where? The landlord of the Green Man was holding it. Seems Danny was in the habit of hocking it, you know, pledging it with the landlord in return for a couple of bottles. He usually redeems it when he scrounges a few bottles. He and Arthur occasionally did a bit of busking when the going really got rough. He pawned it last night. And that's our sawn-off shotgun, eh? Yes. Why the hell didn't Danny tell us? Well, probably because it's stolen property. Danny nicked it. I've just checked the lists. It belongs to the local Salvation Army band. They lost it a couple of months ago. See, they usually play on the corner of Waddington Road yeah, a long time. All right, all right. The shotgun artist knows he's made a mistake by now. That means we've got a killer and his intended victim wandering around somewhere. We're back to square one. Mm. Right, release, Danny, if we've got everything we want down on paper. Well, what about the trombone? You know what you can do with that. Yes, but it is stolen property. Do you think the Salvation Army will prosecute? No. All right, let the poor devil go then. We've messed him about enough as it is. Right. Set this place to rights. Hope you're taking notes. What? On how not to conduct an investigation. This thing backfires. Chummy catches up with his real victim, they'll have my gus for garters. Join the club. Oh, don't start that again. You know, the day after I got demoted, I was offered a job at the security firm. And the starting pay was half again what I was getting as an inspector. You're a fool. Why didn't you take it? No pension. No, the real reason. Ah. Come on. Get on with it. Try and salvage something from this mess. He gets a bit shirty, doesn't he? Oh, he's got his problems. Haven't we all? You mightn't have had quite so many if you had mentioned about the lights a little earlier. Well, nobody asked me, did they? That's what I like about your type, Mr. Bronson. Eh? Hey. You're so darn helpful. I tell you what it is. It's undignified. That's what it is, undignified. Leave me, Ben. Any of my acquaintances saw me being dragged in here. You weren't dragged anyway, Danny. Come on. Assaulted. And all the way I was. I tell you, it's undignified. But I say it again, mister. Undignified. Good for you, Danny. I reckon I could have you for assault and battery and wrongful arrest, you know. Well, you weren't arrested, but if that's what you want, we'll charge you with arsony. They dragged me bodily in here. I reckon the courts would award me compensation and damages. You were just held for questioning, Danny. Come on. Persecution. That's it. Well, you can't get me for larceny, see? <laughs> you can't book me for vagrancy, neither. I mean, you can't lumber a man what's got ten pounds in his pocket now, can you? Have you? We'll have. The minute I step outside. There's a reporter waiting for him. The Daniel Pierce story? That's right. <laughs> Danny, hmm? spend some of that money on food, eh? And a bath. No oh, chance. Spend it on what I like. Don't you worry about me. You just get the fellow what done him, poor old Arthur. Right, when did you last eat? I can't remember. Let's have some breakfast, shall we? Good idea. Sooner the better. Oh. <laughs> Somebody else saw Danny with that parcel last night. Look, I don't want to hear another word about that bloody trombone, thank you. Oh, well, uh, yes, I want uh, somebody to go out for coffee and sandwiches for two, all right? Thank you. Now, what we've got to look for is a new starting point, something that doesn't fit, doesn't gel. Denise Wright, the girl in flat seven. Well, she's the old one out in that block of flats, all right. I think she is. Something there? Yes, from C11. They seem to think that she was, and may still be, girlfriend to Eddie Moffat. Moffat? He's inside, isn't he? Five years assault. You don't read your supplements, do you? He was released five days ago. <laughs> He's a bright villain, isn't he? Vicious piece of work. You can't tell me anything about Eddie Moffat. I put him inside. Why the hell didn't we get this information hours ago? Well, we were busy with uh, Danny. Yeah, all right, all right. Well, look, his address will be in the supplement for what it's worth. Get it. Right. Oh, and get the girl in, too. <laughs> Eddie Moffat's just the sort of villain who would use a sawn off shotgun. I know. Oh, look at that. Just in time. Look, there's no time for that now. Get that girl. I'll... Yeah. C11, please. Thanks, mate. <laughs> You know where to find me if they want me on the telly, you know. Daniel Pierce, this is your life, eh? <laughs> Cheerio.
Voilà. Enfin. No, no trouble, but I got the feeling I only got there just in time. She had a suitcase open under the bed, ready to be packed. How did she look? A bit tense. Trying to play it cool. Did C11 come through with anything on Moffat? No. No reason to follow him after release. They're doing what they can through informants. Oh, great. Yeah. And needless to say, it'd be nowhere near the address given. Yeah, anything more on the girl? Ah, uh, sniff it. Might be enough to give us a lever. Oh, she has come up in the world, hasn't she? Yeah. Let's have her in. Yeah. Miss Wright, uh, would you come this way, please? This is Chief Superintendent Kingdom, Miss Wright. That's right. Please. Well, I suppose there's no need to tell you what this is all about. Well, I would just like to know why I've been singled out and brought down here. Well, we feel that you might be able to uh, help us with our inquiries, you know, the usual thing. Usual? Oh, you're not familiar with police procedures? No. No? I'm sorry, I felt sure you would be. Why? Well, because uh, you've had dealings with us before, haven't you? Uh, Miss Warner? There we are. Bow Street Magistrates Court, two or three occasions. Nothing very serious, mind, especially now that we're enjoying the fruits of the permissive society. It was a long time ago. Oh, yeah, exactly. Long before Miss Warner became Miss Wright. You never let up, do you? No. Not when we're dealing with murder. You're not trying to tie me in with that car park affair, are you? All right. So I was in business in you the You were on the game, Miss Wright. Thank you. I know what they call it. I left all that behind years ago. That's a matter of opinion. How do you earn your living now? Not that How? way. I saved. A bit of money. It would take more than a bit of money to pay the rent on those flats. It's astronomical. I'm not answering any more questions until I take legal advice. Quite right. Oh. Eddie Moffat can afford the best lawyer in London. Who is Eddie Moffat? Oh, it's going to be like that, is it? Eddie Moffat is a vicious criminal. Got a streak of violence in him that makes the craze look like Tweedledum and Tweedledee. Heads a bunch of tearaways who specialise in extortion, armed robbery, murder. They've been known to use knives, razors, coshes, pistols, but their favourite weapon is a sawn-off shotgun. The same weapon that ended the life of an innocent man last night. Now, you know Eddie Moffat better than I do, Miss Wright. And I know him very well. <laughs> Somebody in with him? Yes, he's still in with him. He wanted this in a hurry, as usual. Tell him we've finished everything, will you? Yeah, I'm sorry, but you haven't. Well, what is it now? Well, there was a motor accident last night, not far from the scene. Mm -hmm. Two cars in collision. One of them was pretty well a write-off. But the driver didn't hang around, he scarpered. Witnesses say he was pretty badly injured. And they towed the car away to the pound, and the traffic branch had been going over it, and they found blood on the bodywork on the outside. What? There's also some small holes that could have been made by shotgun pellets. Does he know about it? I've only just received the report myself. Yeah, it's all right, all right. We'll get on to it right away. Right. I don't think you realise the seriousness of the situation. Yes. I think you ought to see this immediately. If you're not involved, then there's no reason why you should object to answering a few simple questions, is there? Someone visited you last night, Miss Wright. No, I was alone all evening. Mm. Was it Eddie Moffat? Take Miss Wright down to the canteen give her a cup of tea. Right? I don't want a cup of tea. Have it. On the hat. Listen, how much longer are you going to keep I don't me know. here? I just I'm like sorry, to... I don't know. They've only just thought to report this. Well, there was no immediate connection. A car riddled with shotgun pellets, spattered with blood, and they don't see the connection. Well, the car was badly smashed up. The officers at the scene had no reason to connect it with a crime. Didn't they look? Yes, but it was dark at the time. They towed the car away to the pound some distance away, and then... Then in the morning, they... look, we've only just received the full report at 10 o'clock. What happened to the driver? Well, he was, witnesses say he was pretty badly injured. Who's the registered owner? No, I've just checked that with records. The present owner's a man called Lee Collins. The car was originally purchased by Edward George Moffat. Good night. 
Who are you ringing? CRO. I'll get a line on this man Collins. Don't bother. I know all about Lee Collins. One of Moffat's team. Bright boy. Moffat's second in command till I put him away. And then with the boss safely behind bars, Lee Collins began to move in on some of Eddie Moffat's business interests. And Moffat's girlfriend? Uh, that remains to be seen, but one thing's certain. Lee Collins's car was in that car park last night. And that Eddie Moffat's violence. Oh, you'd only cross him once. I remember now. We got some anonymous information when we were after Moffat. Always had a feeling it might have come from Collins. Now I wonder. What? If this whole thing's a setup. Ambush. Yeah. And that wino walked in and botched it all up. We've got Lee Collins' address. Ah, forget it. It'll be phony. But he must have a pad somewhere. And if he's injured, he'll probably make his way back to it. Lie low and hope to hell Muffet doesn't find him. How the hell do we find him? We haul in a young gent called Joe Daly. Who's he? Oh, there's a bit of form, nothing very spectacular, but we might be able to lean on him. Where does he fit in? Known associate of Lee Collins. They got together when Lee began to better himself. Right old mine of information, aren't you? Get it. Right. You'll scream. That's exactly what I want him to do. <laughs> He's not really been very helpful, is he? Well, you know the type. Hard as nails, mm. tough. Ruthless. Right, old Humphrey Bogart. Uh, difficult. When you've quite finished. We won't be for a while yet. Well, I've got things to do, haven't I? Got some old lady staked out, have you? Cost and carry job. Uh, you're a right one, you are. Look, can I go now? No, not now. Maybe not for a long time to come. Listen, mate, I know the routine. But you've got nothing to tie on me and you can't keep us hanging about. Is that so? You've got a charge, pin it on. Otherwise... Oh, yes. I just wasn't born yesterday, that's, that's all. all. good stuff, isn't it? If you're trying to nobble me for anything, you need proof, mate. Well, I was nowhere near that car park. And I've got half a dozen mates that'll tell you that in a court of law. Well, as for this geezer that got his, uh... Well, that's the first I've heard. Cobblers. Straight up. Do you want to know something? What? There is every likelihood that we might pin this on you. What? You heard. <laughs> you're the cure off your rocker. You know Lee Collins. Lee? Don't deny it, there's a good lad. What? Well, you're, you're confusing you me. You set him up. It had to be somebody new. And trusted. Well, I didn't know him that well. Well, you don't have to be somebody's bosom pal to blow their head off, do you? Well, no one blew Lee's head off. Well, that was the idea. But it didn't work out. No, hold it a minute. Hold it! Did it! Look, I didn't know Lee was being set up. Look, I swear to God, I know nothing about all this business. Well, you've got to convince us. Well, Lee would tell you. He might. Oh. If we could find him. Yeah. Well, well, I know where he could be. Oh? He'd tell you. Where? Look, you've got to believe where, it. Where, Joe? Well, he's got a pad. Keep it running. Fulham. 22 Four Staff Road. Basement flat. Where's Denver? Outside, waiting. Tell him we're finished, will you? Right. Yeah, well, what about me, then? Look, I swear I don't know nothing about all this business. To be quite honest with you, I don't really care. Is he to be charged, Governor? No, get rid of him. Come on. Get off! Come back in, I've got another job for you. Are you going to send him for Collins? No. Just find out if he's there. We've got to flush out Eddie Moffat. There's only one way to do that. You're still refusing to cooperate. Despite the fact that an innocent man was killed last night. Brutally. Cold-bloodedly. Just because, unknown to him, he happened to cross the path of Eddie Moffat. That's all guesswork. I wouldn't bank on that. All right. Let's try another tack. What time did Lee Collins leave your flat last night? Who? Collins! What time did he leave last night? I Lee Collins what... was at your flat. Eddie Moffat knew he was going to be there. You set Collins up, didn't you? You set the whole thing up. And that makes you guilty of murder, Miss Wright. And I promise you this. I'm going to see you standing in that dock next to Eddie Moffat. 
Take it away. Caution now. Charge it. No, no, wait. For what? More hedging? I didn't know there was going to be any shooting. And that's the truth. Lee had been double-crossing Eddie. He'd been double-crossing the whole time he was inside, you know, moving in. Well, Eddie heard about it. Moving in on you, too. So, you got Collins to your flat for Eddie Moffat to shoot him. No! He said he was going to mess him up a bit, but that was all. Just mess him up. Down in the basement car park. Yes, I didn't know he was going to use a shotgun. But you know all about Moffat's vicious temper. You know the sort of reputation he's got. Well, he'd just come out of prison. I didn't think he'd risk... I had to do it. I had to. Eddie would have fixed me. I, I mean, he really would have fixed me if, if, if I didn't do as he said. Where is he now? I, I, I don't know. You know. I don't. He's probably out of the country by now. Oh, no. Not yet. Not with Lee Collins roaming around as free as a breeze. You don't think Collins is going to hang about after last night, do you? Perhaps he's got no option. What do you mean? What Eddie Moffat doesn't know is that Collins was injured in an accident last night, shortly after he escaped. Governor. Ironical, isn't it? Got himself smashed up a bit, just a few hundred yards from your flat. He's hurt. He's not going anywhere. Except maybe to that drum of his in Fulham. 22 False Staff Road, isn't it? Isn't it? Oh, get out. What? Go on, you can go. Oh, we'll want to speak to you again very soon, so don't even think about taking a holiday, will you? Anything wrong? Anything wrong? She knows how to contact Eddie Moffat. You can bet your life on it. I'm betting Lee Collins' life on it. She's going to go to the nearest phone and she's going to tell Eddie just where Collins is. That's right. It's too dangerous. Oh, it's been dangerous ever since no, Moffat pulled that trigger. Too many botches all the way along the line in this case. I mean, you should play it safe. Now, you, you don't know for sure that Collins is at that place. You don't know. It, it's all assumption. So let's not hang about. Is he in there? Yes. Open up, Collins. It's the police. Oh, he's in there, all right. Kick could do it there. Relax, Collins. It's not Eddie Moffat. I know you, it's Kingdom, isn't it? That's right. Well, listen, I've got something to tell you. Eddie Moffat. We know, we're expecting him. No, nah, not here. He doesn't know about this place. I've got a list for two. you, mate. This one. I've got to get out of here. How badly are you hurt? I don't know. Make sure they're on the toes, will you? Right. Don't want him slipping in here without us getting warning. I want you to go to the signals with me. Yeah, you got this place staked out. Two people yeah. arrived. I've been lying here sweaty bloody in case he found out. Well, you shouldn't mix with the big boys. Before, yeah, he's psycho, though, you know that, don't you? I mean, he's round a twist. Charming girlfriend. Yeah, she's lovely, that one, a real sweetie. Good. Signals as prearranged. Yeah. And if this goes wrong... It'll be running through to form. Just about everything else has gone wrong with this case. Oh, lovely. See if you can fix the door, will you? Gunner? Yeah. I only hope that Eddie Moffat is a nutcase. Otherwise... Otherwise he's not going to show up, is he? And how are you going to explain that? What was the name of that security firm that offered you a job?
him to me. Good job Lee Collins went to hospital 20 minutes ago. Yes? Uh, Sergeant Walter, speaking. Uh, yes, sir, we're just wrapping it up now. Uh, Chief Superintendent Kingdom. W well, he had to go out, sir. Someone he had to see. Shouldn't be long. He's dead. Has been for about an hour. What happened? Drowning his sorrows, or his loneliness, I imagine. I always drank. He lived on booze. That's not booze. That's five-star brandy. After the muck he was used to and the condition he was in, the whole bottle was just too much. It happens that way. He must have known. Yes, I suppose he must. Do you want him anything special? No, I just wanted to let him know we'd got the bloke who killed Arthur Glenn. Danny was our first suspect. I think we may have given him a hard time. Just wanted to see if he was all right. <laughs> 